Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kenny here. Okay, today we had a lot of bleeding, so I'm going to go ahead and inspect the charts. Basically, we're just going to go over S&P, kind of talk macro conditions. Obviously, a kind of wholesale sell-off of the entire markets. So if you're wondering where we were, basically, I had some personal stuff come up. I had a little baby boy uh, just got born uh, two days ago, so uh, definitely kind of setting that up and getting him home and getting everything ready there. And so... You know how that goes. If you're a parent, you know, and most of you all probably are parents knowing the demographics of the folks who watch my show. So anyways, uh, this is the S&P 500, of course, and this is the regression channel that we were looking at. And as you can see here, um, this, uh, if you're not familiar with the regression channels, uh, it's basically the mathematical average going up. So channel up is typically a 95% uh, kind of success rate, depending on where you catch it and how you catch it. This is obviously baked in. Uh, based on how we uh, kind of quantify the markets and all that other stuff. But, you know, depending on how you, you know, set up your channels, 95% uh, success rate. That said, this is definitely failing right here. So this channel has definitely failed. Uh, the top of this channel right here, right, this top is uh, anything above it is uh, anomaly or signal, and anything below it is anomaly or signal, right? Because... This distribution right here of this channel, mathematical average, is 95% of the time will print in here, right? If it's outside of this, it's definitely signal. So what does this mean? It either means it's time to buy or there's going to be a much broader sell-off. So the thing that I would suggest is the VIX is sitting at 25.72. And you know, if you've watched our channel for any number of time, and if you've kind of probably back-tested it yourself, uh, a VIX of reading of 25 is typically risk on unless there's something fundamentally wrong there may or may not be depending on what you think the inflation numbers are going to come in at and there's nothing near term that may cause that not that i'm seeing but again that's the kind of sticker shock that we need to be aware of uh that said i do think uh that we get a tight bounce here uh i'm nibbling because i don't know that this is the bottom we did kind of call it before uh last week we were saying that it's more likely that because it's the range has been tightening so hard that we do get a slip through and hit the 100 day moving average and in fact we absolutely hit the 100 day moving average exactly to the t and bouncing straight up so right now still confirming that here's the thing though as fast as it happened and as obvious as it was Scary to buy here but definitely nibbled I bought two positions I bought uh, I added to our Activision Blizzard call, uh, the one in June, uh, added a substantial amount. Basically, whatever position I had, I added that exact position. Uh, same strike, same everything. Uh, so just doubling down there. Second piece, I bought AMD because, of course, AMD, Lisa Su, the best. Uh, yeah, anybody who was like, man, I wish I would have caught AMD at 100, here you go. And we know it's worth 120 uh, at the very, very bare minimum. In fact, we've raised our price target to about 136 so that said, uh, obviously a great buy for AMD here. So we bought AMD. Um, is this the bottom? Not sure. Here's the crazy thing, though. Uh, you know, folks like Tom Lee, who is, the, who is the eternal bull, even is starting to sound pretty kind of, uh, I wouldn't say pessimistic, but he is even saying himself to start nibbling and not nibbling. I'm going to watch that in a second. But if you look at the uh, DeMarc indicator, that's indeed because, you know, we did see this kind of here. We uh, kind of talked about it, but, uh, you know, the 9, almost the 13 printing up here. Perfect uh, buy setup. It does move down, and as you can see here, we're still early in the count. So this day one, day two, I mean, a 9 would be a proper bounce, right? But it's, it's hitting pretty hard, which is why I do think that um, here is about 409, 410 is your next logical support line. So that said, nibbling here, S&P may be a little bit weaker than some other stocks. Uh, if you didn't know, there are stocks who are doing pretty okay. Um, so like, for instance, Asan is still very, very, very strong today. It almost did nothing. Uh, it's actually up <laughs> today, up uh, half a percent. Um, it did chop down. I, I definitely cut off, cut out of my short position. I flipped long uh, and I'm out again. Uh, definitely just day trading Asan at this point. It's just a wild stock, and it has so much strength right now. Uh, I do think that there's some interesting mechanics going on. I think it's a market cap game too, but, I mean, look at just these levels. You could have gotten so much play here. Uh, but that's kind of where we're at on Asan and all the like. 
Um, if you're wondering what the options flows look like today, um, well, I mean, the biggest thing here, the things that I'm just seeing over and over again, it just looks like a lot of protection, but um, Tesla is the number one coming in. Uh, if you think it's too late, though, and if you want to, and there, these are puts, right? So it's either some protection or it could be just raw. Uh, but either way, implied volatility is still decent enough where you can uh, get some interesting play here if you're interested. So not too bad. Apple calls are next. Uh, an interesting one here. I said that three times. Lucid. Uh, Lucid calls. People are pretty interested in Lucid right now. So 108% implied volatility. So you better be really sure that uh, that's the play. Um, just want to sh show you the, the Tom Lee CNBC in case you miss it. Uh, but just listen to the nuance here. I think that markets are sort of seeing this gigantic wall of worry, Carl, you know, and I know people are talking about Evergrande and the spillover being like Lehman. But when I when I look at what yields are doing, which they're being quite tame, um, and the VIX isn't really as jumpy as it could be, I, I'm, a, I'm, on, I'm in the camp that this is going to prove to be a really good buying opportunity. Now, I'm, I'm, I heard Michael Santoli and I agree with him. I don't think that means stocks find their bottom today or even tomorrow, but you know, is the recovery that's only one year into uh, over, or has the pent up demand been exhausted because of some property woes in Asia? Uh, I would say no. So I, I, I would look at sell offs like this, which is like sort of broad based selling is, you know, time to sort of add incrementally, only knowing that it may not be bottoming today. So yeah, you heard it. The eternal bull is saying it might be bottoming and he's still pretty constructive on september even though we're already 20 days in remember he did say the september rally was coming never quite uh materialized so if he's right on the september rally, it should come in hard and last seven days last five days maybe um we were pretty contrarian to this for a while only because when we see certain macro conditions or certain things just not really working uh we got to kind of flip the script uh something that um Mike asked from the chat, he was asking, you know, in terms of like catalyst or broad based sell off, is there a distinction? And I would say, like, when there's a catalyst like Evergrande, for instance, uh, now, um, the idea here is, you know, when a catalyst comes up, especially like the pandemic or the coronavirus, uh, these things tend to just uh, move the thing a lot faster. It becomes more of a dip buying situation. Uh, and so, if you were kind of dip buying the S&P, it probably worked in the last kind of eight months. But generally, when there's not the market breadth or uh, some stocks are moving higher and faster, you just want to be playing momentum and riding those. So Apple, for instance, was a good one to ride this whole time. But S&P, obviously, as well. Um, right now, though, with volatility comes dip buying. And so, you know, if you're ever going to try to catch a falling knife, now is probably it, but the thing is, make sure your st stops are very tight because you can definitely get blown off. Make sure you either have a ton of time. Don't even recommend right now op options or playing options, but if you are, just make sure you have enough time so you know exactly what you're doing. It's going to be really complicated right now, so equity is the way to play this, the safe way. There is no actual safe way, but I mean, sit here and wait 10, 20 years with equity. With options, you're gonna. Anyways, that's it for today's video. We're gonna keep making videos here. Don't forget, uh, I just uh, want to give you a little bit of a market update, some clarity and some color. Um, also, also gonna be doing the uh, the Cliff Research Essentials Day Three coming up real soon here. So, no issues about that. Uh, we will be slowing down a little bit this week, only because of the baby. Uh, but after that, back into full swing starting next week. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we will see you maybe in a couple of days, uh, maybe tomorrow. See, depends what the market does. All right. Take care, everyone.